Welcome to our channel. It could not have existed in its time. We don't know what it was used for. It is not known who created it. Such sentences are used in connection with some archaeological finds falling under the so-called forbidden archaeology. In today's video, we will introduce you to five strange discoveries that keep scientists awake at night. But before we look at them, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and without further ado, let's get started. Along the southern coast of Greece sails a richly laden trading ship. Its destination is Rome, where they will surely welcome and generously pay for all the valuable goods imported from the islands of Rhodes and Kos. However, the weather does not favor the voyage. A strong wind drives in clouds, and the heavy ship collides with a reef in close proximity to the island of Antikythera and sinks to the bottom after a while. Along with it, in the depths, ends not only a multitude of bronze and marble statues, decorated pottery, jewelry, and valuable coins, but also a mysterious bronze mechanism about which more superstitious sailors claimed it was surely cursed. At the bottom of the sea rests the wreck of an ancient ship for 2,000 years. Shortly before Easter in 1900, a collector of underwater sponges, Elia Stadiatos, dives in the area. At a depth of 42 meters, he sees something that takes his breath away. What exactly did the long sunken wreck of the Roman ship conceal? In the same year that the diver discovers the wreck, the first expedition set out to it, pulling up several statues. However, the world has to wait two more years for the biggest find. In 1902, in the presence of Greek archaeologist Spirit and Stace, several pieces of a corroded and heavily encrusted device made of copper and wood are retrieved from the wreck of the ship. There are a total of three larger and several dozen smaller fragments, including clearly visible gears. Gradually, everything is pieced together, creating a schematic of what the device, roughly the size of a shoebox, might have looked like. However, the mystery remains as to what this peculiar mechanism, which has practically no parallel in the world of archaeological finds, was actually used for. Scientists generally speculate that it could have been the very first analog computer, which ancient scholars used to calculate and simulate the movements of celestial bodies. However, there are many more questions that science is trying to answer regarding the mechanism. For example, it is not clear whether it was an experimental device or if there were similar devices. Most researchers lean towards the first version, and many believe that some significant scholar of the time could have been behind this creation. For example, Archimedes himself. This would also be consistent with the latest findings regarding the age of the device. Originally thought to have been made around 80 BCE, the latest research using X-ray tomography suggests that it is at least 100 years older. What was this device actually used for? Among the areas from which mysterious archaeological discoveries almost regularly emerge is undoubtedly Egypt. Among the most famous finds undoubtedly belongs the seemingly inconspicuous wooden object, resembling a small falcon with outstretched wings at first glance. It was found during excavations near the village of Saqqara in 1898, and for a long time escaped greater attention from researchers. It wasn't until 1969 that Egyptian professor Khalil Messiha took notice of it, delving into its analysis, and subsequently pointing out some very interesting facts such as the fact that the wings taper and bend downward, and the tail is not horizontal but vertical, which is something that definitely does not correspond to the anatomy of birds. To this day, the logical question of whether it could actually be a miniature model of a functional aircraft provokes many researchers. Precisely crafted models based on the original were able to take off without any problems and are perfectly aerodynamic. For over 50 years, there has been a debate about what the Saqqara model actually is. Skeptics reject all speculations about an airplane and believe it is simply an abstract representation of a bird or insect. However, many people, including German researcher Peter Belting, oppose this view. According to him, it follows from contemporary finds and written sources that ancient civilizations almost always depicted insects and other flying creatures anatomically correctly. Belting also points out that evidence of knowledge of flying in ancient civilizations has been found in other places as well. In Egypt, for example, it is the Pharaonic Temple in Abydos, 
one of the hieroglyphs there strikingly resembles a combat helicopter or even a spaceship. Is the Saqqara bird evidence that ancient civilizations possessed knowledge that was later lost in the sands of time? In 1936, excavations are taking place in the ancient village of Kujut Rabu near Baghdad. It is a site that was inhabited over 2,000 years ago by the so-called Parthians, the inhabitants of a vast and relatively advanced and well-organized empire for its time. It is precisely into their era that Austrian archaeologist and painter Wilhelm Koenig places one of the most peculiar historical discoveries ever. It is a 14-centimeter high clay jar with a copper cylinder inside containing an iron rod attached with asphalt. The rod showed signs of corrosion, probably because it was immersed in acidic fluid, such as vinegar or wine, adds Greek journalist and electrical engineer Ioannis Syragos. Is it really a battery, as claimed by Wilhelm Koenig? And if so, what could it power? Koenig devotes several years to the discovery and tries to prove that it is indeed an ancient battery. Other scientists and engineers gradually join his assertion. American Willard F.M. Gray even creates several replicas that function as weak batteries. However, the question of what such batteries could power remains unanswered. While some people believe that ancient cultures were much more advanced and used, for example, simple electric light bulbs, more skeptical researchers suggest that the current from the batteries could have been used for electrolysis or gilding vessels. In addition, there is a significant number of scientists who believe that the energy from such a battery would be too weak for any practical use. It is much more likely, they say, that it was simply some sort of peculiar container for papyrus scrolls. Is the explanation really that simple then? Or is the Baghdad Museum evidence that we still know very little about ancient civilizations? The majority of people are familiar with them, mainly from the movie Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. However, in reality, they are a real phenomenon, behind which some see mysticism and mysterious abilities of ancient civilizations, while others mainly see deception and an attempt to get rich. We are talking about the famous Crystal Skulls, which are, at least according to their first discoverers, remnants of pre-Columbian civilizations of Central America. The history of their discovery dates back to the 19th century, mainly to the French archaeologist and antiquarian Eugène Bobon. He sold one of these skulls in his shop in 1881, claiming to have brought it from his previous stay in Mexico. Another skull was found a few decades later by the English adventurer, traveler, and writer Frederick A. Mitchell Hedges. His daughter, who later publicized the find, claims he found it while exploring Mayan ruins in Honduras. The origin of the other two skulls, which are now in museum collections, is unknown. As is the question of how many more may still be in private collections or undiscovered. A number of unconfirmed information and speculations are associated with the skulls today. While scientists point to analyses suggesting that they are creations from the late 19th or early 20th century, many enthusiasts note that several clues suggest otherwise. The skulls are supposedly thousands of years old and may even come from some legendary civilization, such as Atlantis. It is impossible for primitive nations with simple tools to have created something so sophisticated. Theorists and proponents of the ancient astronaut theory often cite several arguments in favor of the idea that captivating crystal skulls may also be associated with advanced extraterrestrial technology. Some of these skulls exhibit an extreme level of detail and complexity that could indicate advanced technology beyond the reach of ancient human cultures. And to the speculation about their origin are added tales of the special powers of these skulls. Rumor has it that anyone who looks into their eye sockets will suddenly have a heartbeat and may even see into the future. Some people claim the skulls are cursed and dangerous, while others believe they have healing powers. We believe it's some kind of computer that can record energy and vibrations from the surroundings, says American mystic and writer Joshua Shapiro. Are these skulls really some ancient wonder? With this discovery, which has been exciting not only archaeologists but also interested lay people for several years, a criminal case is associated. The disc was found in 1999 by two looters of archaeological sites on the Middleburg near the town of Nebra. 
Both treasure hunters sold the valuable artifact to two dealers, who then smuggled it abroad, but were caught in Basel when the criminal police feigned interest in buying it. Today, no one doubts the authenticity of the artifact. Since June 2013, the disc has even been part of UNESCO's cultural heritage. What makes the object Laboled as an archaeological sensation so special? The circular object with a diameter of just under 32 centimeters and a thickness of 4.5 millimeters in the center and 1.7 millimeters at the edge is now considered the oldest known depiction of the night sky in the world. Of course, we disregard depictions of constellations and rock drawings from the Stone Age, but in their case, they are geoglyphs. The disc weighs about 2.3 kilograms and is mainly made of bronze. The disc was buried sometime around 1600 BCE and experts from the State Heritage and Archaeological Institute in Halle an der Saale date its manufacture to the period between the 17th and 21st centuries BCE. The images on the disc undoubtedly represent the night sky and thus have a clear astronomical meaning. However, interpretations of the depiction vary. For example, a group of closely spaced points above the sun and the moon is interpreted as the Pleiades cluster. In many myths around the world, this star cluster belonging to the constellation Taurus is considered the home of the gods. According to another interpretation, the disk represents an attempt to reconcile the lunar year of 354 days with the solar year of 365 days. The disk could thus represent some kind of Bronze Age computer. It could also have been used to determine the summer and winter solstices. The sensational archaeological find may have also allowed calculations of planetary orbits and similar things, but about which we know nothing, so it is currently just speculation. The Nebra disk hides much more incredible knowledge, but listing it would far exceed the scope of our video. In short, this disk represents incredible knowledge of astronomy, mathematics, and geometry. This was the first part of the video series Forbidden Archaeology. In the second part, we will look at another five archaeological discoveries that should not exist at all because they do not fit into the time period in which they were created. And if we were to accept these facts, we would have to question everything we have learned so far. That's all from us for today. If you're interested in videos filled with mysterious mysteries, dark stories, legends or monsters, and you crave more, subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any new videos.